In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about using Microsoft Forms to create a survey. So let's get started. Microsoft Forms is a browser-based Microsoft application that lets you create surveys, quizzes, and polls. To use Microsoft Forms, you will need a Microsoft account, which many of you already have. But don't worry if you don't have one, you can create one for free. And I'll leave a link in the description so you can get started. Once signed into your Microsoft account, Head on over to the Forms page, and again, I'll leave a link in the description for this. On their home page, you will see the option to create a new form or new quiz. There is also an option to select a ready-made template for you to use. However, for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a survey from scratch. So let's create a new form. The survey design process is rather simple. At the top, you will see two tabs, questions and responses. We'll focus on the questions tab first. Start off by giving the survey a title. Let's call this example Customer Feedback. As well as giving the survey a title, you also have the option to insert an image if you like, such as a banner. Images can be added from a Bing search, OneDrive upload, or uploaded from your computer. Under the title, you can also add a description for your survey. This is great to add further information or instructions. Okay, so that's the title and description sorted. Let's start by adding questions to the survey. To add a new question, select the new button. In Microsoft Forms, there are seven different question types that you can add. And these are multiple choice, free text, rating, date, ranking, Likert scale, and a net promoter score. I'll go over each one. And let's start with a text question. The question can be typed in the first box. You can also add an image by selecting the Insert Media button. Answers for text questions are short fields by default. However, if you select the Long Answer button, then responders will be able to type up to 4,000 characters, including spaces. Another thing you can do for text questions is restrict the type of answers you want to receive. To do this, select the More Settings button and then select Restrictions. You can then use the drop down menu to specify the restriction. For example, you could ask for a responder's telephone number and set the restriction to number, meaning only numbers will be accepted. Moving on, let's take a look at the multiple choice questions. As the name suggests, this type of question allows for responders to select an answer you have listed. Just fill in your question and the answers you want the responders to pick from. If you'd like to have more than two answers, select the add option button. You can have up to 60 options. Another thing you can do is to have an other option by selecting this here. Doing so will mean responders can type in their own answer. By default, responders will be able to select only one answer in multiple choice questions. If you'd like them to select more than one answer, you can select the multiple answers option. It's also worth noting that the answers will be displayed in the order you have them here. You can reorder them by clicking and dragging on an answer. Alternatively, you can have the options randomly shuffled for each responder to avoid bias. To do this, select the More Options button and then select Shuffle Options. Finally, if you'd prefer to have the answers listed as a drop-down menu rather than a full list, you can do this by going to the More Options and then selecting the option. Note if this is selected, then the responder can only select one answer. Let's now move on to a rating question. You can use the levels option to specify how many levels the responders can pick from. This ranges from two to 10. You can also use the symbol drop-down menu to change the rating symbol from a star to a number if you prefer. To help give responders more context as to what the lowest and highest level means, you can add labels by going to more options and then selecting label. For example, you could say very poor for the lowest level and very good for the highest level. The next type of question is a date question. This type of question, as the name suggests, can only accept an answer that is in a date format. So days, months, and years. That's it, nothing more to it. Moving on, let's look at a ranking question type. For a ranking question, you can input up to 10 options for the responders to rank. You can delete options and add more. During the survey, the responders can then click and drag on the options to specify their rank. For example, Having those options at the top of the list means they rank them higher than the options at the bottom of the list. Let's now look at a Likert question. Likert questions are used to understand the responders' attitudes and opinions about certain statements. 
As with all the question types, you can enter your question at the top, but this time the options and answers below are listed in a table format. You can have up to 7 options and 20 statements in a Likert question. New statements can be added with the add statement button and additional options can be added with the plus button here. Lastly let's take a look at the net promoter score question. These question types are similar to rating question types but they are designed to automatically calculate the net promoter score in the responses area and I'll go over this later on in the tutorial. The scale on the net promoter score cannot be changed, and so responders can select an answer on a scale from 0 to 10. You can however change the labels at either end of the scale. So that's an overview of the different question types in Microsoft Forms, let me now show you a few of the things that you can do for all the questions in your survey. For each question you can easily adjust their order by selecting a question and using the up and down arrows to move the question earlier or later in the survey. Alternatively, you can click and drag on the question to reorder them. If you want to remove a question, you can simply select the delete question button. Also, if you want to duplicate a question, you can select the copy question button. For all questions, if you'd like to force the responders to answer the question before they can submit the survey, then select the required option. This will then mark the question with a red asterisk to note that this is a required question. All questions can also be given a subtitle. To do this, select the More Settings button and then select Subtitle. This is useful to provide more information about a question. Another useful thing you can do is group related questions into sections. To add a new section, go to Insert New and then select Section. Then give the new section a name and subtitle if you want. Each section will appear on a separate page when the responder comes to filling out the survey. To move questions into the New section, you can simply use the up and down arrows or click and drag the questions into the new section. A final thing I want to show you before I explore how we can preview the survey is the branching feature. For each question in the survey you have the option to do what is known as branching. This is found in the more settings menu and then select add branching. Branching is when you can send a responder to a different area in the survey depending on their answer to a certain question. For example you could have a choice question that asks people if they own a pet. You can then apply branching to the different answers, so that if a responder selects yes, you can send them to another question to ask them what type of pet they have, for example. Ok, so that's an overview of creating the survey, how about adjusting the form's settings? At the top you can select the theme button to adjust the appearance of the form. There are a range of templates to choose from, or you can select the plus button to add your own background image and theme colour. To preview what your form looks like, select the preview button. This will show you what the responders see when they view your form. You can preview the form in both a desktop and mobile view. Ok, with the form all ready to go, you will want to go to the settings menu. To ensure responders can respond to your survey, you need to ensure the accept responses option is ticked. You can also specify a start and end date if you wish to put a time limit on it. If your form contains no sections, then you have the option to shuffle the questions so each responder sees them in a random order. If your form does contain sections, then you also have the option to show a progress bar to notify responders how long they have left to finish the form. Finally, you have the option to get notified for each new response to your form. And you can customise the thank you message displayed when the responder completes the form. With the form settings finalised, you're now ready to share the form. To do this, hit the send button. The link here can be used to share your form with responders. This is the long link, however selecting the shorten URL option will trim this link down so it's easier to share. Other ways you can share your form include via email, a QR code, as well as a direct embed code. You can also choose to share the survey quickly via Facebook and Twitter. So once you've shared your survey, you will hopefully get some responses. So let me now go over how Microsoft Forms reports the results of the survey. To view the responses, go to the Responses tab. There will be a summary at the top showing the number of responses, average time to complete the survey in minutes and seconds, as well as a status to show if the survey is still accepting responses or not. By selecting the Open in Excel button, you can open the results as an Excel spreadsheet. The View Results button will show you the results for each responder separately. Then as you scroll down you will see the overall results for each question. Let's briefly go over each one. 
So the first question was a free text question. So all answers are listed separately. Another thing to note is that for each question, you can also click on the more details button to see the responses given by each responder. For question two, this was a multiple choice style. The results are shown as a pie chart and you can mouse scroll over each segment to see the proportion of each answer. Question three was a rating question. The main thing to note is that the average rating score will be shown. For question four, this was a date format question. Similar to the free text question, each response is listed separately. Question five was a ranking style question. For these results, Microsoft Forms will tell you the ranking based on a scoring system. The graph to the right displays the proportion of responders for each rank. For example, Forrest Gump was ranked as the first choice by 80% of responders and the second choice by 20% of the responders. Question six was a Likert scale question. For this graph, the different colored bars represent the different responses. The size of the bars indicates the proportion of responses. In this case, the more bars that are on the right side indicates the responders were either satisfied or very satisfied, whereas those on the left side indicate poor scores. Finally, question seven was a net promoter score question. Responders who scored a nine or a 10 are called promoters. And those that responded with a score of zero to six are labeled detractors. Responses of seven and eight are labeled passives. And the total number of promoters, passives or detractors are reported here on the left. The net promoter score to the right is calculated by subtracting the percentage of customers who are detractors from the percentage of customers who are promoters. Passives count towards the total number of responders, therefore decreasing the percentage of detractors and promoters and pushing the net score towards zero. A final thing to note before I wrap up this tutorial is that you can delete all responses received by going to the more options menu. And additionally, you can also get a link to share this summary page with others for ease of sharing the results. And that brings me to the end of this tutorial. You now know everything there is to creating surveys with Microsoft Forms. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. It really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.